To be honest with you, uh, today on Knowing is Winning, I will talk about things that I had um, no idea about just a short while ago. My good friend has uh, brought it to my attention and said, why don't you do a piece on that? And uh, here we are. So, in the beginning, uh, the story of the black market science reads like um, an, uh, an alternate history whispering in uh, the margins of labs and uh, back rooms where fevered curiosity meets necessity, where regulation, um, ideology, and profit collide to produce inventions that never quite fit the uh, sanitized narrative of institutional process. Imagine a cast of characters who might not pass background checks, but who possess a hunger that resembles the very engine of discovery. A former grad student quietly nursing a theory that her advisor dismissed. An incarcerated um, uh, mechanic who repurposes discarded parts into a device that solves a local problem. A pharma sales rep who starts modifying compounds to help relatives who lack access to care. Um, hobbyists in garage labs swapping plasmids and stories over cheap coffee. These figures are rarely villains or saints in the tidy sense. They are human actors driven by need, pride, desperation, or the simple joy of seeing something work outside the glare of institutional oversight. Their um, labs are makeshift and messy. Apartment branches, uh, converted shipping containers, abandoned warehouses, and uh, occasionally the spare closet of a tech incubator. Places where the uh, usual constraints of grand cycles, peer review, and ethics committees are loosened, sometimes for better and sometimes for far worse. When the formal channels close the door, innovation slips in through a window. The uh, inventions produced in this shadowy economy are not uniformly nefarious. Some are clever frugality, like um, I don't know, low-cost diagnostic kits cobbled from off-the-shelf uh, electronics and uh, surplus uh, reagents that uh, can detect a disease market in a rural clinic where no hospital exists, or um, um, energy devices assembled from uh, scavenged parts that give a community resilient power after a storm, um, improvised water filtration systems refined by people who um, had no choice but to make clean water out of what was available. The moral clarity these projects offer, you know, solving immediate uh, human scale problems, is seductive. Yet the same ingenuity that yields life-saving hacks also produces tools that are ethically thorny or dangerous when used without sufficient safeguards. A um, technique that uh, democratizes gene editing for rare disease research can also be misapplied in careless hands. A method to bypass paywalls for academic literature can empower isolated learners and erode the incentives that fund future research. Black market science is therefore never purely utilitarian. It repeatedly forces us to confront trade-offs between access and accountability. The origins of many underground innovations are often pragmatic. Where official supply chains fail because of geopolitics, cost, or neglect, people improvise. During the embargoes or in the countries with strained medical supply lines, clinicians and community scientists reverse engineer essential tools. The stories that endure are striking. Um, a community lab assembling ventilator parts from auto components when hospitals ran short. Or local groups modifying sensor arrays to monitor pollution when municipal data were opaque or absent. Or um, clandestine networks shipping generic drugs repackaged and annotated for specific use um, where branded alternatives are unaffordable. These are not tales of outlaw romance. 
They reveal the adaptive capacity of humans faced with structural scarcity and expose systemic failures that official institutions often ignore. In many cases, as a matter of fact, black market innovations highlight demand-side signals that formal R&D trajectories miss. Um, cheap, maintainable, and culturally appropriate technologies that serve those overlooked by mainstream markets. But of course, uh, there is a darker uh, seam running through this underground. Um, the commercialization of uh, contraband ideas and illicitly obtained knowledge. When someone hacks a method to synthesize a molecule at lower cost or reverse engineers a, a proprietary algorithm, the result can be a product that undercuts legitimate firms and reshapes markets overnight. This has happened in computing, where pirate copies of software seeded communities that later became the talent pools of legitimate firms and in pharmaceuticals, where counterfeit and diverted medicines create public health hazards while also providing access where none existed. Or um, consider leaked and repackaged large model weights and tooling for LLMs. Unauthorized circulation of high-quality large language model weights and um, fine-tuning tool chains created a black market for customized, private, and sometimes illicit applications of generative AI. This allowed small operators to spin up powerful LMs offline, add domain-specific datasets, and deploy the models for tasks ranging from sophisticated phishing to automated vulnerability discovery. The breakthrough is uh, democratic access to powerful models outside of cloud controls and usage policies, producing both creative niche uses and malicious automation at scale. The black market innovator sometimes becomes an industrialist selling workarounds to a desperate market. A moral economy forms around supply and demand. If the formal economy leaves a gap, the informal one rushes to fill it. The consequences are ambivalent. Some communities benefit from cheaper options, while others suffer from degraded quality control and the erosion of trust in institutions. There is a particularly cinematic strain of black market science that traffics in secrecy and spectacle, where the underground lab becomes an arena for transgressive experiments. Biohackers sharing CRISPR kits and protocols over forums, amateur geneticists attempting to alter yeast in pursuit of art or taste, hardware motors building a clandestine satellites or radio arrays to bypass state control. Individual biohackers and community labs moved from curiosity experiments to concrete, repeatable protocols for editing microorganisms and yeast using off-the-shelf CRISPR components and low-cost equipment. Then, there are the uh, dark web DNA synthesis and oligosupply networks. Um, actors on illicit markets began offering DNA oligos, gene fragments and uh, synthesis services explicitly designed to evade standard DNA screening safeguards. These services used intermediaries, fragmented orders, and non-compliant suppliers to deliver sequences that would otherwise be flagged, enabling covert acquisition of custom DNA and accelerating the ability of non-institutional actors to assemble functional genetic constructs. The um, innovation is operational, a logistics and ordering playbook that subverts biosafety screening rather than inventing new biology. These efforts produced open protocols, publicly shared troubleshooting, and commercially available atom kits that have been adapted in informal networks to engineer microbes for fragrance, pigment, or rapid prototyping of simple biosensors. The breakthrough is practical accessibility. Gene editing workflows that once required institutional infrastructure now run on hobbyist gear 
shortening the path from idea to biological result outside regulated labs. These acts of technical dissent are sometimes framed as civil disobedience, direct challenges to monopolies on knowledge and infrastructure. They celebrate open access and uh, do-it-yourself ethics, arguing that knowledge should not be sequestered behind paywalls, patents, or classified programs. But the rhetoric of freedom can mask real hazards. Um, in the hands of well-intentioned amateurs, experiments meant to be benign can become vectors for unintended consequences. Um, contamination in a makeshift lab, accidental release of modified organisms where ecological interactions are poorly understood, or the proliferation of dual-use knowledge that bad actors might leverage. The uh, black market uh, narrative thus becomes a um, mm, cautionary tale about how liberation from institutional constraints carries with it a responsibility that sometimes disappears in the rush to create. One of the most consequential arenas where underground innovation has left its mark is the realm of data and algorithms. In places where governments restrict access or surveillance is pervasive, engineers have developed clandestine networks, privacy-preserving tools, and workarounds that enable free expression, secure communication, and alternative economies. Pirate mesh networks and homemade encryption tools have supported dissident movements and independent journalism, proving that technical ingenuity can be liberatory. Take a look at the uh, community-built privacy networks and uh, censorship circumvention stacks. In uh, highly surveilled regions, grassroots teams engineered resilient mesh networks, disposable VPN nodes, and ephemeral routing appliances optimized for load bandwidth environments. These stacks integrated cheap SDRs single board computers and bespoke routing protocols to create locally controlled censorship resistant communications. The novelty is highly optimized low cost network uh, stacks designed to be assembled and operated covertly by non-expert groups to maintain information flow under authoritarian constraints. Yet conversely, the same techniques can be deployed by the criminal enterprises. Encrypted marketplaces, dark web services optimizing illicit trade, or algorithmic systems for exploiting vulnerabilities in financial and logistic infrastructures. The ethical calculus is complicated because the technical fixes that empower activists can also empower criminals. The context of use becomes the determinant of moral value. The tension between innovation and regulation is particularly acute when it comes to biological science. The rise of accessible gene editing technologies and cheap uh, sequencing has lowered the barrier to entry for many forms of biological experimentation. This democratization has enabled remarkable citizen science, sequencing local microbiomes to study environmental change. Uh, developing low-cost diagnostics for neglected diseases or um, using synthetic biology to biodegrade waste. Yet, the same accessibility invites misuse, intentional or not. In regions with limited access to branded biological medicines, networks emerge that repackaged or locally relabeled biosimilars and compounded formulation to most urgent demand. In some cases, groups reverse engineered delivery devices, um, for instance, um, insulin pans or auto injectors, and produced locally manufactured analogs or adapters to use with the available drug vials. The technical accomplishment is reverse engineering tightly regulated drug device combos and producing working low cost substitutes in informal supply chains. Ironically, some of the most profound black market innovations in biology have been catalyzed by fear and restriction. 
when a government clamps down on a scientific exchange or funding, the rise up, uh, curiosity and urgency find covert channels. This can produce breakthroughs uh, that might have otherwise been delayed, but it also produces a regulatory conundrum. How can societies encourage grassroots innovation without sacrificing biosafety and ethical standards? Then, and this is really wild and <laughs> something that really blew my mind, there are uh, the, um, these clandestine satellite payloads and private launch workarounds. Small teams and private groups sidestepped formal licensing and coordination by deploying nanosatellites and piggyback payloads using irregular launch arrangements, reclaimed stages, or covert integration processes. These operations often used improvised telemetry and recovery, enabling unauthorized remote sensing, private communication networks, and clandestine data collection. The key innovation is a launch logistics hack that turns commodity hardware and opportunistic launch slots into sovereign capability outside international oversight. So, looking at it all from one perspective, commercial and ideological black markets also shape scientific norms by subverting intellectual property regimes. Piracy. Open source insurgency and patent circumvention are forms of protest as much as they are economic acts. Take, for example, innovators who reverse engineer proprietary medical devices to lower costs and low income settings that I have mentioned um, uh, above. These acts can save lives, but they also deprive companies of revenue that fund R&D, raising tough questions about sustainability and justice. In response, some companies have embraced frugal innovation themselves, while others have pursued aggressive legal remedies. The push and pull between clandestine modification and formal response often accelerates change. The market, regulated or not, begins to incorporate lessons from the underground. In the end, black market science is less a genre of criminality and more a mirror held up to systems that leave gaps. It reveals what mainstream science prizes and what it neglects. It exposes where markets fail and where communities are resilient. The underground will always attract the curious and the desperate, the visionary and the opportunists. The challenge for society is not to stamp out these networks wholesale, but to understand the conditions that produce them and to build institutions that channel that restless ingenuity towards outcomes that uplift without endangering. If we succeed, the next great innovation might originate not from secrecy of a backroom, but from a collaboration that learned its lessons there and chose a safer, more just path forward. Let's hope so. And this, this was Knowing is Winning. Thank you very much for watching.